know, when we left off with our uh, stories from Francisco Jimenez uh, about point of view, um, we had just read Inside Out, and then we had read about his family moving from the circuit, moving from one town to another as they worked. And so the next story is also by uh, Francisco Jimenez, and this is a home alone. So we're still talking about what happens um, to a family, same family with uh, Roberto and Francisco's father and younger and older siblings as they move in order to find work to pay attention to uh, pay attention to who the narrator is and what his experiences have to do with this story. So this is not a fiction. This is actually nonfiction. The next morning, Roberto and I woke up to the rattling sound of the alarm clock. I turned it off and listened to the silence of dawn. The sounds of Papa's coffin, the rattle of his aspirin bottle, and the rolling of Mama's 12-inch lead pipe as she pressed dough to make tortillas were absent. So too were the smells of chorizo and scrambled eggs. I missed Mama's gentle tapping on my shoulders and tugging of the blanket to wake me up. In the distance, I heard the barking of dogs. Every morning, they circled the large, empty oil barrels that served as garbage cans. As I got dressed, I heard farm workers warming their car engines before leaving to look for work, picking carrots or thinning lettuce. So in that first paragraph, we are introduced to the uh, main character, Francisco, waking up in the morning and not finding his family was there. So he gives the description of what's happening in a way that makes you think that you're actually still there. Even though this is a true um, account or a true story, it does make it sound like, uh, it make you feel like you are in the point of view, you're in his shoes. So that's really what first person can do is make you feel as if you are in the other person's shoes or taking on their point of view. What I did not miss that morning was emptying the bedpan, which had been one of my regular chores. Papa, Mama, and my younger brothers brothers and sister used it, but Roberta and I did not. I hated taking out the Folgers coffee can and emptying it in the outhouse every morning before I went to school. I felt embarrassed to see be seen by our neighbors, especially the girls. Every day, I tried to convince Mama that one of my younger brothers, Trompito or Torito, should take over that task. But she did not agree. Holding the bedpan behind me, I would poke my head out the door to make sure the coast was clear. I would rush to the outhouse, holding the bedpan steady and trying to chase away a pack of hungry dogs that followed me. Don Poncho, one of our neighbors, knew how much I disliked emptying the bedpan and teased me whenever I ran into him. One morning, he was coming out of the outhouse as I carried the Folgers coffee can. What do you have there, Ponchito? He said, smirking. Your coffee and pan dolce, I shot back angrily. He was taken by surprise as much as I was. He told Papa, who scolded me for being disrespectful, but Don Pancho never made fun of me again. Alone in the barrack, Roberto and I took care of our regular chores. We made our bed, swept, and mopped the floor and fixed breakfast. My brother washed the dishes, and I dried them and put them away. We left the house sparkling clean, just as we did every morning before heading off for school. Roberto and I dropped off the L at dropped my brother Roberto dropped me off at El Camino Junior High on his way to Santa Maria High School. I was excited to be back at school, but nervous. How far behind in my classes would I be? What would my teachers and classmates say to me? 
My teachers, Mr. Ken Milo and Miss Ellis, must have known how I felt because they did not ask me any questions. They seemed happy to see me back. My classmates acted as if I had never left. I figured my teachers must have said something about it to them or they simply forgot. I felt lucky but anxious, expecting one of them to ask or say something at any moment. No one asked. But in case they did, I had an answer. I would tell them that the Border Patrol officer had made a mistake thinking I was here illegally. That once I proved to him I was born in Colton, California, he let me back in. And so we'll stop there for now. Um, and the main thing is to focus on point of view again. And we see that uh, Francisco has returned to school after some time and uh, he's afraid that or he knows what has happened um, his family has been picked up by border patrol so he's still in junior high school and um, some, he fears something bad has happened to his family and we also pay attention to the differences between this setting here with Francisco and maybe now so he talks about taking out a bedpan and an outhouse so there wasn't really running water in their home. 